Stories from Parliament. Votes for Women, Part One. Deeds not words. Deeds not words. Deeds not words. That was our cry. That day in 1909, we suffragettes were marching to Parliament to demand the vote for women. That women, as well as men, should be allowed to vote in electing our government. Our Prime Minister, Mr. Asquith, had promised it should be so. But now he'd had second thoughts. He feared that too many women might vote against his party and bring his government down. So he did precisely nothing. Deeds not words. Deeds not words. That cry of ours meant two things. Instead of mere promises that the vote would be given to women, we wanted the government to do as they'd said. And if they wouldn't, then we were willing to act as well as speak in protest. We'd come from our meeting in a nearby hall, and the words we'd heard from our movement's leader, Mrs. Pankhurst, were still ringing in my ears. We shall be marching to Parliament, not as lawbreakers. But because women should be lawmakers. My name is Constance Lytton. My full name is Lady Constance Bulwer Lytton. Some people thought it strange that I, from a family of the ruling class, should ever have been a part of such a crowd. But Mrs. Pankhurst was a well-born lady too, and listen to what she said next. A society that allows women no part in decision making cannot flourish. Beyond the home, what lives are we permitted? Important posts are barred to us in all professions. Posts in government are just for men. Yet all their decisions affect women. They must either do us justice by giving us the vote, or do us violence. <laughs> When we reached the Houses of Parliament, 